We will now work through a very basic example of equity settled share-based payment transaction. You will identify that I've included our solutions on the right hand side of the screen. Now let's read through the information provided. At the beginning of year one, the company grants 30 share options to each of its 100 employees. The share options will vest at the end of year three. Now, based on this, first thing that you have to identify, share options. Therefore, you need to know that this will be equity settled. Number two, this is transaction with employees. Number three, there is a vesting period of three years, provided that the employees remain in the company's employment up to that date. The company estimates that the fair value of each share option is five rand on grant date. Now you will remember that we have indicated previously that when there's a transaction with employees, our measurement date and grant date will be the same date. And guys, this will be the beginning of year one. And we will have to use the five rand to calculate, measure our share-based payment reserve. Why? The rule indicates to us that when we have a transaction with an employee, measurement date will be on grant date and we need to use the fair value. Then they indicate to us, once vested, the options can be exercised at 20 Rand each, a strike price of 20 Rand, the current market price beginning of year one. Of the shares is 22 rand. Additional information. At the end of year one, five employees resign. Therefore, this is actual information and the company expected that another five will resign in total over the remaining two years. You need to identify that we will have to use 10 employees. Five actual resigned and five estimate to resign. Therefore, our total number of employees at the end of year one will be 90. Originally, we had the 100, five resigned, and we estimate that another five will resign. Now, at the end of year two, another seven employees resigned, and the company expected another three to resign in year two. Guys, important now. In year two, we had our original 100. In year one, we know that five resigned. This is actuals. Five resigned. In year two, they indicate to us that seven resigned, actual, and they expect another three. Therefore, guys, do you see that we are using estimates? each year to calculate our share-based payment reserve. We've got a combination of actual and estimates. Therefore, this 10, guys, and I'm going to make use of this lilac purple color, this 10 consists out of the seven that actually resign and the three that we estimate to resign. Therefore, we have a total of eight five employees at the end of year two. Then in year three, three employees resigned. We have our hundred minus the five that resigned in year one minus our seven that resigned in year two, the actuals, and then minus the actual three that resigned in year three. Therefore, at the end of year three, our employees will be 85. In this example, we need to prepare the journal entries for the three years. They indicate us in the last bullet point. At the end of year three, 50% of the options were exercised. Now, guys, before you look at your calculation, immediately you know that this is equity settled. Therefore, what is your journal entries? Recognition, you will debit your employee expense in your profit and loss and you will credit your share-based payment reserve. Now in year three, when the options were exercised, 
you will have to debit your share-based payment reserve and credit your capital amount. Okay, now let's just stop there. Basic examples, recognition, I'm pretty sure you're comfortable with this. Now the difficult section. When you have to prepare journal entries or actually all of your share-based payment transactions, my recommendation, always, always include a table. This table should have your number of employees, number of options, shares, share appreciation rights, vesting period that you need to identify, fair value, or if you want to, replace this with price. Share-based payment reserve, remember this is a total value and this value will be presented in your statement of changes in equity. When I refer to statement of changes in equity, you will remember, and you can look at the bottom right hand corner guys, your statement of changes in equity will have a column, share capital, retained earnings, and now a share-based payment reserve. And every year, when you recognize an amount, let's say, for example, opening balance, closing balance, movement. Now, let's say, for example, this will now be our year three. I'm going to indicate to you just now the totals, opening balance and closing balance. And this is extremely important that you ensure that you understand this principle. I'm going to explain this to you at the end of our journals. And then... The last column, your profit and loss. Now let's just first focus on calculating our share-based payment reserve, which will be our total amount. We have calculated our number of employees, we have our number of options, and we know that there's a vesting period, therefore proportionally calculate for each year. At the end of year one, we only recognize the portion that relates to year one. At the end of year two, we need to recognize the portion that relates to year one and two. And at the end of year three, we need to recognize the portion that relates to year one, two, and three. And our fair value at grant date why fair value at grant date? Our rules of RFRS2 indicates to us that when we have a share-based payment transaction with employees, we measure this at grant date. Therefore, our share-based payment reserve at the end of year one will be a total of 4,500. At the end of year two, 8,500. And at the end of year three, one, two, seven, five, zero. Now, this is the total, okay? Therefore, your journal for the year, or year one, will be 4,500 debit, employee cost, credit, share-based payment reserve. The journal for year two will be to debit 4,000 employee expenses, credit, share-based payment reserve. Why only 4,000? At the end of year two, you have a total of 8,500 that should be in your share-based payment reserve. At the end of year one, you have already recognized 4,500. Therefore, we now only have to recognize the movement, which is 4,000. Then at the end of year three, four, two, five, zero. Same principle as at the end of year three, your share-based payment reserve total is 12,750. We already have the 8,500. Now let's have a look at our statement of changes in equity. Remember, we are only looking at our share-based payment reserve column and our opening balance, which is the beginning of year three. Therefore, at the end of year two will be an amount of 8,500. For year three, we have recognized an additional 4,250. Therefore, our closing balance will be 12,750. Now, at the end of year three, they exercise the option. But guys, it is important, only 50% were exercised. Therefore, 50% of our 
12,750 shall be recognized. Therefore, we will debit our share-based payment reserve with 6,375. Our statement of changes in equity disclosure presentation at the bottom does not include the last two journals. I've only included this to indicate to you how to present the information. Okay. Once vested, the options can be exercised at 20 Rand each. Therefore, at the end of year three, when the option is exercised, we need to use this 20 Rand for measurement purposes. Now guys, we will have a look at the details regarding this journal entry within our detailed lecture examples. What I want to indicate to you is that what you need to remember is 85 employees exercise this, 50% of them, guys, only 50% of the 85, and this is 30 options at 20 Rand each.